Senator Menendez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for calling this hearing. Uh, you know, in the worst financial crisis uh, in generations, uh, consumers were not protected from the tricks and traps, uh, and federal regulators were often more concerned uh, about the interests of Wall Street than Main Street. And we now have an obligation to hold both Wall Street and non-Wall Street lenders and providers of financial services accountable uh, for whether they treat consumers fairly. And it could be done by laying down clear rules of the road. Uh, and so that's why I look forward uh, to your work uh, at the agency. Uh, let me ask you a couple of specific questions. I, I want to ask you about prepaid uh, cards, something that I have uh, been pursuing for, such, uh, for a while now a product whose use has exploded in the past few years, especially among uh, underbanked consumers. Uh, since credit cards, debit cards, and gift cards have all been regulated to uh, some degree, prepaid cards remain one of the few, uh, few largely unregulated products uh, in uh, the marketplace. Uh, and as for the fees consumers pay on them, there are a wide range of undisclosed and I believe in many cases unreasonable uh, fees. And they certainly don't come with FDIC insurance or protection against theft or loss for the consumer. Right. So uh, we've introduced legislation, the Prepaid Card uh, Consumer Protection Act. What progress has the Bureau made in analyzing this issue and moving forward on consumer protections on these cards? Uh, let me say a couple things in response to that, Senator, and we appreciate your particular interest in this subject and the legislation you have uh, introduced on the t concerns you raised, both disclosures and transparency on those products and also uh, protections for the money that people uh, have in effect on deposit with the product as opposed to with a banking institution. Uh, there, there, there are two phenomena at work here. Number one, prepaid cards are an example of the tremendous innovation that occurs all the time in the financial markets. Uh, you know, just in, in my generation, when I was, when I was a, a, a kid, uh, credit cards were a new and exotic product. Now they're almost universal uh, in our economy. Uh, debit cards are a more recent product that are now widespread and in common use. Uh, prepaid cards are one of the newest products, but obviously on the cutting edge of finance, more and more people are beginning to use them, so we need to look and make sure that there's appropriate protections for consumers there. Sometimes it takes the law and the regulatory scheme time to catch up with, with innovations. Uh, I would also say that it's a reflective of the fact that regulation can push usage around in the market. As you said, there's now protections and constraints on credit cards and new ones recently on debit cards. That is pushing the market more toward prepaid cards, which are not subject to that. So we certainly want to have some sort of level playing field so that products are being chosen by consumers and offered by institutions based on their merits, not because there's some sort of differential regulatory regime. Well, we certainly so, appreciate innovation, and we want to see innovation. By the same token, when you see a market that goes from the regulated process to the unregulated process, yep. there's a reason. Yep. And part of that yep. reason, it's far more profitable because very often the circumstances under which that profitability is achieved is at the expense of the consumers in a disproportionate fashion. Mm -hmm. So is this an area the Bureau is going to be looking at? Y yes, it is an area we are looking at. It's an area of, of concern for both the reasons I stated. We're also aware that the Congress is looking at it, and certainly if you legislate on the subject, we'll be happy to carry out the laws uh, as you enact them. Let me ask you, uh, you mentioned about in your opening statement about simplified rulemaking, particularly for smaller institutions. and. Uh, that's something that I think is welcome to a lot of the members' ears here. So along these lines, can you tell the committee how your agency will craft regulations and provide regulatory guidance in a way that makes compliance simple and workable for community banks and small non-deposit uh, regulated entities? Sure, and, and I'll say two things about the work we're already doing. Number one, we're trying to be highly inclusive. Uh, in going about this. Uh, it was mentioned earlier that maybe the Bureau has given the impression, some thought, that we know best. Uh, what we find is we will know better as we hear from others, both the people who operate in these markets, the financial institutions themselves, and the consumers who tell us about impact. So our No Before You Owe projects are pitched entirely around getting the kind of input that allows us to streamline, simplify, and render more transparent 
uh, the kind of disclosures here. We also have inherited a, a, a huge thicket of rules from other agencies, and we've already published a public Federal, federal Register notice asking people broadly for their ideas about how we can streamline those rules, cut down burdens that aren't delivering benefit to consumers, that we're in the, in the comment process on that. We'll have comments back uh, sometime later next month. Uh, and then we're going to set to work at seeing what we can do to show people that we can streamline rules and be an agency that is mindful of the burden on, on financial institutions as well as delivering value for consumers. Right. Mr. Chairman, if I may, one last question, the, uh, particularly to the minority community in the country, is very important. One of the, your mandates is to facilitate innovation through transparency. And one study suggests that half of the country, over 100 million adults, cannot find $2,000 in an emergency if given 30 days to do so. Uh, ha has the Bureau, or does the Bureau intend to look into how to meet the credit need of this very large and underserved population? Uh, yes, Senator, and we actually started, we, we had a field hearing in uh, Birmingham uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, which was our first beginning look at the market where it is clear that in this country, as you say, there is a, there is a clear consumer demand for short-term uh, small-dollar loans to help people get through crises, emergencies, when they don't have a stash of money that they can draw on or they don't have a friendly relative who's willing to uh, pony up that money for them. Uh, there are a number of products out there that are serving that need. Uh, we want to make sure that those products are actually helping consumers rather than harming them. Uh, but it's, it is a significant problem that has been unsolved in this country, I believe, uh, is that there is this demand we need to fulfill this demand, and we need to spur competition to fill that demand. Uh, and that's something that we're, we're thinking about very carefully. We don't have all the answers on it, frankly. Uh, but over time, we're going to be trying to figure it out, working with industry and consumers to understand it. We look it. forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman.